Thanks for listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us. Going to have a conversation with Dr. Stephen Koka. He's Associate Chair of Research for the Department of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and he's also the co-founder of Renalytics AI. And uh, he's joining us here to talk about um, AKI and CKD. Welcome to the program, Dr. Koka. Thanks for taking the time. Of course. My pleasure, Neil. Good morning. Well, a, a bit of background. I did mention uh, your chair, uh, associate chair of research at uh, Mount Sinai uh, Department of Medicine. A bit of re- uh, background about yourself, and uh, let's jump right into this uh, company that you've co-founded. Sure, my pleasure, Neil. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to have the uh, the fruits of of many years of our research that we've conducted um, using biomarkers in kidney disease. Uh, both in acute and chronic kidney disease, um, actually have a chance to come to the clinical arena, which is facilitated by this um, new company called Renalytics AI, uh, which started a, a, went into a license agreement with Mount Sinai last year. Our, our lead product, uh, our flagship, is actually called Kidney Intellex, um, which is a combination of blood-based biomarkers that have been validated in several studies uh, to predict patients who are going to experience progression of kidney disease over time in, in combination with uh, clinical data and variables that are routinely in the electronic medical record. And these biomarkers and clinical variables are combined into a machine learning based risk score and we're going to bucket people into low, medium, and high risk, and that is the output of Kidney Intellex. And this score will be provided to both uh, physicians and to patients to improve the way we are uh, approaching patients at risk uh, for progressive kidney disease, which is a huge problem in the United States and internationally. Now, these, this new diagnostic tool uh, that you've developed. Why is it so important? I mean, if you've got kidney disease, um, it is a progressive condition. Um, managing that condition throughout your life is, is necessary. Why is it such an important uh, development, kidney intellex? That's a great question, Neil. Um, if you actually look at the national numbers, the proportion of patients, new patients starting dialysis is increasing every year. Part of that is driven by the diabetes epidemic, which continues to increase. And diabetes causes about half of all cases of kidney failure requiring dialysis. Um, so despite it being 2019, we, are, we have not done a great job in the medical community of, 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 tie, of stemming this tide of progressive kidney disease. Part of the issue is awareness. Um, Only about 20% of patients with kidney disease are even aware that they have chronic kidney disease based on NHANES national survey data. And even at advanced stages of kidney disease, I take, for example, stage 4 CKD, which means kidney function is now less than 30% of normal. And they're one step away from stage five, which is the, the stage where really dialysis or transplant is needed. Only 40% of patients with stage four are referred to nephrologists, the kidney specialists from the primary care level. And that results in people uh, starting dialysis when they do ultimately progress in more than half the cases in a very unplanned fashion. They end up in the emergency room needing a, a catheter placed in their neck. Uh, they ha- they're not prepared emotionally. They're hospitalized for a week or so getting, getting prepared, and they need to find an outpatient dialysis unit, et cetera. Um, and we really should be shifting this whole paradigm forward and detecting people who are going to have this progression much sooner months to years in advance of this happening so that the mental preparation, the referral to the nephrologist, and 
medicines that can slow the progression of kidney disease can be given and we really can can reduce the burden of kidney disease so we're talking about not only um longevity of life but we're talking quality of life as well based on this early prediction of the progression of the disease or even the presence of the disease. You say a, a lot of people don't even realize that they have it. Um, and you say this AI is changing the path uh, of this uh, chronic kidney disease um, being detected so late that it, there's really nothing that can be done or quality of life is well almost non-existent. It, it really impacts so many facets of people's lives. I mean, I, I, I sometimes say tongue in cheek dialysis is almost like partial imprisonment because people have to, uh, go to the inpatient or outpatient dialysis unit three times a week for several hours per day. There's the travel to and from. There's the feeling fatigued afterwards. They have so many complications with their other organ systems, including you know heart disease, vascular disease, uh, anemia, bone disease. Once that kidney failure in, uh, ensues, and it's not reversible by dialysis itself. The costs on the healthcare system are enormous. So there's so many different things that, that really will improve um, in terms of patients' outcomes, their quality of life, and costs to the whole healthcare system if we can do a better job up front. And that's really where kidney intellects comes in. We're, our first phase is we're targeting patients with type 2 diabetes. Now, if you say type 2 diabetes, at, at a population level, only a few percent of patients will actually experience kidney disease progression. So you can't treat everyone aggressively for kidney disease because then you'd be, you'd be treating a large proportion of people that will never progress. And that's what kidney intellex does. It really finds out the high, and discerns who is high risk. And, and right now with our data, we are able to predict patients who have more than a 50% chance of experiencing progress, progressive kidney disease. And also at the low risk cutoff for our, for our test, we can tell people with 98 to 99% certainty that they will not experience progression. Hmm. And that can be comforting to patients because Absolutely. of course, and, and, the problem is, and I know we don't have too much time to talk about it, but the current staging system of CKD, the way it's named, are the, and I alluded to this earlier, they're stages one through five. But ironically, the way the, the kidney function reads out, people often jump from no kidney disease to stage three kidney disease, which is kidney function less than 60%. And a lot of people can end up there just by a function of aging, Mm -hmm. and not have true or, or risky kidney disease that is going to progress. And, and, and a vast majority of those patients in the early stage 3 CKD, as we call it, will actually outlive any risk of experiencing kidney failure. So you're, we're talking unnecessary uh, dialysis? Well, they wouldn't get unnecessary dialysis, but you wouldn't want to nece uh, necessarily have them seeing the nephrologist all the time mm -hmm. or having um, too aggressive of care in terms of medications or aggressive blood pressure control or other things because every medicine we take is, is a burden on a, on a patient, more pills to take, they're already taking a bunch, yes. more costly obviously, and every drug we take, even aspirin, Tylenol, they, and especially some of the drugs that we're using medically have side effects. And you don't, you, you don't want to expose patients to unnecessary risk of side effects uh, if, they, if they really don't need it. So it's really shifting the um, risk-benefit ratio and determining what's best for that individual patient. Well, doctor, we'd like to go online and then get some more information about um, your, your practice and what you do there at um uh, Cedars uh, Mount Sinai, and also about CKD and AKI, or AKI, as yeah. well as um, and, uh, Renalytics, uh, AI, and your flagship product as well. Where can we go online and get some more information? Good, great question. Um, we have our, our website, renalyticsai.com. 
Um, we, we also, um, the National Kidney Foundation has some great educational resources. Um, the American Society of Nephrology has some great resources. Um, but as part of, as part of uh, this, this package we're rolling out, we're going to actually provide internet tools through our, our, our web-based portals that will provide more information to both physicians and to patients, and they'll be customized for each, where they can learn about the different stages of kidney disease and what can be done and exactly what is driving their individual risk score, whether good or bad, and the components of it so that they make the wise decisions right. Um, as, as, they, as, they, as they live and hopefully, again, take control of their disease. Um, and there's really no reason to be having this epidemic now that we have the tools in both the computing capacity to do these high-performance algorithms, the biomarkers that have been there and validated across multiple studies, and the advent, really, of a, a, new, a new class of medications for, for diabetic kidney disease called the SGLT2 inhibitors, sodium glucose co-transport inhibitors. There have been multiple large studies, including the recently published Credence trial uh, in the New England Journal, which have shown that these drugs are, are powerful protectants against progressive kidney disease in patients with type 2 diabetes. We'd like to get you back and uh, talk about some of these developments as, as well as more about what we've talked about this morning. Dr. Koke, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you this morning. I, I Again, thank you for taking the time and uh, joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Hoping to My get pleasure, Neil. Great. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.